Dude, gaming is so interlinked with weed. Like, I can't 100%. even tell you how many nights we would just be waiting to crop up. Like, we'd have the fucking grow in the garage, broke as fuck. Like, you know, getting close to the finish line, you get kind of broke, man. You got to pay those bills, you know? Yeah. And just Call of Duty, man. Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2. Uh, episode number 12 of Highly Productive uh, by Pine Park. Uh, we have uh, Teddy Liddy. Ted Lighty. Ted Lighty. I, I, I read the thing. No, that's fine, dude. Yeah, so you, you're going to have to forgive me. This is uh, my second podcast of the day. Uh, the third time <laughs> I'm fucking getting mega high. So, and, I, and, and you brought me some, some special here. I'm really excited to, uh, to try it. Uh, but we are, we are here with the founder and CEO of Alien Labs. Uh, big, always been a big fan. Have been smoking. Thank you, bro. As, as far as I can remember, as, as, as soon as it became legal and, and culturally appropriate to smoke in public, um, definitely uh, the biscotti is, uh, is me and one of my boys' favorite, uh, one of the, our favorite strains. Um, but yeah, so super, super you know, excited Thanks, to have you man. on, bro. Yeah, biscotti is, uh, I'm, I'm partnered up with Connected. That's their fucking baby. Yeah. Brilliant strain, though. I mm -hmm. love it. Biscotti That's is cultural. Rare to find that big of a cultural strain, you know, especially now like everybody loves biscotti yeah no it's it's, it's one of our favorites uh obviously in in uh <clears throat> in texas and in, in illinois before i moved out of there was it wasn't as accepted as it is uh now like even in those in those states i think the laws are becoming a little bit more uh more lenient with 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 uh, certain you know yeah, amounts definitely. so it's it's becoming a little bit more of a of a day-to-day -day thing and the more that is displayed across or the more that you get to see it in person the easier it is for you to be like, it's not as scary as I thought it oh, was, yeah. right? And, and, and nothing. minds continue to open up on that. Yeah, it's coming. It's come a long way, man. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you've been in it from the beginning, man. If, if, yeah. if you don't mind, like, tell me where your story begins, how it begins. I, I'd love to hear yeah, it. Yeah, so I'm from Redding, which is like uh, in Northern California. It's like right outside of the Emerald Triangle. And it's the first, it's not even a major city, but it's like the first sort of big city outside of the Emerald Triangle. So... Like Reading really got weed popular, quote unquote, because all the farmers from Humboldt would be on the mountain, you know, growing their shit all year. And then they'd come to Reading because it was the first city with like major freeways that you could come sit at a hotel and your boys could come from the Sacramento fucking airport, and buy all your packs and, and safely drive home. Because in Humboldt, there's like two roads. There's like 36 and 299. So one lane, you know, or two lane highways, not even highways. I don't even know what the fuck they're called, but two lane streets and it was not safe for everyone to drive you know like if you're a white boy up in the mountains like you're good but they're racial profiling up there yeah. so redding was a little safer still kind of on the on the you know worrisome side but much better so people the farmers would just come chill in the hotels and sell their shit and yeah. uh my family my aunt and uncle they grew weed like when i was born and then when i was in high school i started buying packs from them Actually, they'd front them to me. I didn't even have money. They were like, yo, if you can sell these, you know, whatever. But I started getting shit like different crazy shit we would never smoke today. They were hella heavy into early girl, which is like the shit that would, it, it's an auto flower. So there's auto flower out there now. Like I think Raw Garden uses mostly auto flower for their uh, carts and their oils and shit. Mm -hmm. But these would finish in like July. So when everyone is out of weed, the early girls would pop off. So you could just tax on those. And then uh, I moved to San Francisco after I graduated high school and I just started going to weed stores and like got my card, started going to the stores. And I was like, damn, this is going to be like San Francisco had stores early, you know, they way before anyone else. I think L.A. probably had some, too. Like I remember Koreatown had some fire shit, um, but San Francisco had all these nice stores already. But you'd go in and it would just be like jars like this. They called it deli style. And you'd ask for like however much you wanted. They would pull it out, weigh it right in front of you. But then they'd put it in like a Ziploc bag. And like, I just knew that there was no way that was how it was going to end. You know, it, it just like any other consumer package good, like it was going to be packaged nice and all the shit. So I moved back to Reading and uh, I grew a little in my closet with my boy, Chris. We grew in San Francisco. We grew like a fucking two lights of a uh, quarkle and green crack. It Ooh. came out pretty fire. Yeah. Quarkle was a cool strain. It was purple Urkel and uh, damn, I don't even remember. I'm going to get cloned for that. It's like a TGA strain, but it was an old school one. I got the um, clones from Oaksterdam. At the time, it was called Blue Sky Cafe. It was their little like clone and flower selling place. Yeah. 
and uh, finished that out and then moved back to Reading. And I uh, started, I worked at a club when I was in Sacramento. I, mo- I moved from San Francisco to Sacramento and then to Reading, like within the span of a year. And I worked at a club for like a year, kind of learned, learned how the business was going to go. Uh, started as a door guy and moved my way up to manager. Start, went door guy, bud tender, and then manager. Mm. And moved back to Reading. And my buddy, who would eventually become my partner, he had a, a store there called Medicali. And I started managing that. And just learned more about the industry, made a ton of connections like I did in SAC, just made a ton of connections. And then um, I started bringing packs down to Sacramento and L.A. And I started calling them Alien Labs, you know, no matter what. I grew some, some I'd source for my boys. Um, but then it became this thing where the packs were so good that you, I could only source them from a few people. Then my buddy who um, owned the Medicali store and I came to me and he's like, hey, like, he had the best shit. Him and uh, my my best friend since fucking fourth grade was his grower, Scott. Mm-hmm. They had the best fucking weed. And I was like, yeah, I can sell all this. Like, yeah. no problem. And then we just teamed up. You know, we partnered up on the brand. Um, Alien Labs just became what it was. Such a good name. Yeah, it's great, right? 100%. It's funny because at the time, that name was because all the... There was no brands yet, really, that I knew about. Um, But there was like a few different things like there was cookies, which wasn't a brand yet, but it was a clothing company that had fire weed. Yeah. And all I thought of with the name was like, that's not really us, you know, like we're different. Like we're the outsiders to this shit. Like we have actual fire, which is crazy. Like, and then we were outsiders. So that alien to me meant more outsider than it did like space gray alien, you know, but um, aliens became cool like nerd all things nerd became cool Hell like yeah. when i was growing up dude like you didn't tell people you watched anime yeah you know what i mean that was something nah. you did with your boys you went to blockbuster yeah. and uh you know rented a few vhs tapes of anime and then kept it a secret Akira, fucking uh, yes in the exactly show. vampire hunter d all, yeah, all yeah, the, yeah. the main movies, initial d you know, one of initial my favorites was fire, yeah. fucking so good yeah uh, how, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 36. 36. I'm 42. So we. Yeah, we're, same, we're, same fucking same, generation. Yeah, 100%. Pre, pre, in, we lived in a world where there was no internet. No internet. And then obviously the one. Um, and then it wasn't cool. You know, it just wasn't cool to be a nerd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even at the time when I made Alien Labs, it really wasn't like the shit hadn't really gone mainstream. We're almost, we're 10 years in next March. So coming up on 10 years of Alien Labs. And uh, it just wasn't cool. And now it's cool as hell. You know, it's so cool to be a nerd and aliens are cool and yeah. UFOs are fucking real. The government's like, yo, this shit's real. Like, it's, it's the, the government's now ran by nerds. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything. I mean, the. And the world's so weird in a weird spot that people, government's like, yo, UFOs are real. And like, nobody really cares. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> so, so, you, so you do, I mean, every time I think about that, I'm like, they did a good job in, in keeping it a secret because we weren't ready. It took decades of entertainment from movies yep. and otherwise to be like, this is what aliens could look like. And then like little by little, like you start to get to that. It was like, here it is. And you're just like, ah, it's like with flat earth. If, if it was right. And somebody's like, oh, you know what? It is flat. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it'd be like, all right, it's, it's, who, who cares? Like what? You know, there, there are lands beyond the wall, right? Like I uh, love flat earthers, bro. Yeah. It's just so funny to me. A hundred percent. It's, it's like a microcosm of like the type of shit that goes on, like on social media, like, yo, if, one of your boys really believed in flat earth and you were like really close with them and you believed it, and it would make you want to believe it. Cause you wouldn't want to be like, yo dude, you're stupid. Like you yeah. don't want to ever believe your friends are dumb. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Oh, you're flat earther, but I'm on flat earth. TikTok. Because you are the company that you keep. So I'm like, if I'm boys with this, that means that I have a little bit of his traits. In me. Yeah, oh, for sure, <laughs> dude. So it's, it's just funny how like, uh, I forget. It's just like small mind or, uh, like close circles, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. you kind of all start to take up the same ideas and yeah. traits and shit. I'm on flat earth TikTok for sure because I just be liking looking at flat earth videos and it's just so, so do, funny. So do I. The firmament. Oh, the firmament. The, 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 the yes. latest thing that I've seen is that dude that pops a balloon inside a uh, inside the, of a rocket and essentially is, it sounds exactly like what thunder sounds like. So anyway. They're, the, oh, they're like, oh, there's, this thunder isn't real. Yeah. Is that, birds or, aren't or, real. Or it's I've only seen the real. birds aren't real. Yeah, the birds aren't real one is a real good one. I love those conspiracy theories. The conspiracy theories now are like, boring dude yeah like the um just all the the trump is a fucking jfk resurrected mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. all the conspiracies have changed you look man. at the hair yeah yeah dude, it's funny they've changed like conspiracy being at the conspiracy theorist used to be cool now it kind of implies like oh i don't know if you're cool or not 
yeah, I was I was super into it growing up. Uh, in high school, I was like me and and like twelve of my other friends were reading like all the Behold the Pale Horse, the you know oh, yeah. like all of the all of the fucking super conspiracy things. So I have a I have a knack for it. I have an interest in it. So anytime any of that comes up, I'm fucking consuming the content I love as it. much as I can. Um, on that on that perspective, right on the, on the content side, uh, you know where where do you see Alien Labs participating in 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 the content side on top of what you guys have already created? Shit, man, it's tough. Like we're super like plagued mm-hmm. on our social medias by fucking uh like the um the algorithm dude yeah like i can't post i haven't been able to post like coming up on two years now on on instagram really yeah i could post like clothes and like super like boring stuff but like anything that is even close to weed i get deleted right away as, as your, your personal and your no, business or both yes jesus it's crazy i i did see i did see my my growth on on um on Instagram sort of hit like a, a little bit of a, of a, of a, of a stopping point or a ceiling. The second that I started to talk about, about Pine Park yeah, and look yeah, they don't coming like from, that. from the gaming industry in, in, in which it's, it's a, uh, it's such a big part of entertainment just in general, like glo- just globally. It's the biggest thing, right? Yeah. It, 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 I mean, next to music yeah. it is. And, and if you look at, at YouTube and the way that they rank the entertainment uh, sectors, you have music and then you have gaming and they have movies and all, all the other stuff. But, we get to, we're not only just, we're not blocked like cannabis brands are blocked, but we're encouraged to create more content on the stuff that we do. Uh, it, there are thousands of, of, uh, of sommeliers that on a, on a daily basis are knocking down four glasses of wine, talking about it, talking about the it's texture, so talking about the whole thing. And that is, you know, I can't play video games if I'm drunk on wine. Like, I cannot. Hell no. No, but if I'm, I'm stoned, not only can I see the future now, but my my hand eye coordination stays yeah, the same. Yeah, so, it is pretty crazy. Yeah. I've gotten pretty high though. Like I, this one strain we made, it was a it was a CBD cross. So mm-hmm. we've been experimenting with like trying to find like a more approachable weed. Like one of the things about our weed specifically is that it gets you high, very high. Yeah. And not everyone really wants to get high like that. You know, that's why I think Skittles and like um, Runts are, became a little popular. You can kind of smoke a lot of that and like be fine like not to say it doesn't get you high because it definitely works mm-hmm. but it just like doesn't get you like your brain turned off yeah you know but i made uh we made this strain that was a cbd cross and i dabbed it and i just found myself like running into the wall like whatever i was playing i would just be running into the wall and then i'd be like oh shit i'm running into the wall and then yeah. i course correct and like <clears throat> five minutes later i'd be running into the wall again it just like my brain was just, just drifted yeah dude it was just going somewhere else it was crazy uh, joystick drift is a thing mm-hmm. yeah the, if you don't clean your your joystick on the controller like it does it gets sticky it's it's called sticky aim yeah uh, for sure yeah uh you, you're talking about gaming you you play uh you play oh, some yeah, call of duty i, I heard shit. yeah what's oh, your yeah. favorite game that's tough right now i'd probably say elden ring i just beat that if like about a month after it came out, it took me yeah. like a minute. It took me like 150 hours. To beat yeah. It, but I was like Fuck. super OP, bro. I was just like crushing at that point. Um, but I love shooters. We, dude, gaming is so interlinked with weed. Like, I can't 100%. even tell you how many nights we would just be waiting to crop up. Like, we'd have the fucking grow in the garage, broke as fuck. Like, you know, getting close to the finish line, you get kind of broke, man. You got to pay those bills, you know? Yeah. And just Call of Duty, man. Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, Halo. I was into Halo before I was into Call of Duty, but then, like, once I hit Call of Duty, I was just like, I never really turned back. Um, I switched to PC, like, the year of the pandemic. And, again, man, I just haven't really... I turn on my console because my daughter likes to watch me play, like, mm-hmm. she calls them scary games. Mm-hmm. Like, she started with Resident Evil. Yeah, that, and, well, that one's scary. For yeah, sure. for sure. And now she, we just... We played, like... Um, Damn, I can't vestige, which was another like super scary one. Like mm. she just wants she's like, sorry, dad, I only like like scary games. How old is she? She's five. Oh. So yeah, I'm, I might have made her into a little uh Yeah. No, I mean I think it's I think it's better. I grew up uh, afraid of every single scary movie that has ever been created because at the age of four years old, my aunts, who I like to consider I get my humor from, they made me watch they didn't make me, they invited me to watch uh The Exorcist. Oh, that's a scary one. 1984 you know what i mean like i had no business seeing that so since then i've been the biggest pussy alamist when it comes to that. yeah that's a fucking super scary one dude that's like still to this day pretty scary yeah i don't think anything's really top the exorcist 
But no. yeah, she likes scary games. So yeah, I switched to PC uh, in the June of the pandemic. Um, and I got bad with the controller, which then I come to regret. Like I'm pretty good with the keyboard and mouse, mm-hmm. but like when I first started playing, I was using an elite on my, an elite controller on my PC and, uh, I was just shredding. Yeah. But then I switched to Tarkov. Like my buddies were playing yeah, Tarkov yeah, and I wanted yeah. to play and you can't use a controller. Dude. So I was like, I need to learn how to use a keyboard and mouse. And then after I got good with keyboard and mouse, like controller feels like shit. Yeah. Like it's so It's tougher slow. to use a controller for sure. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And but if you sw- if you just keep going on a controller, like it was fine. Like I was way better. Yeah. If I never would have started using keyboard and mouse, like yeah. Man. But keyboard uh, controller is kind of better in some games, man. Yeah, My definitely boys shooters that are good for sure. Play with controllers. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Definitely for uh for for Call of Duty for sure. Yeah, like, and like Fortnite and Apex, anything that has like good uh auto auto, auto like a sticky or whatever. Yes, the game. Yeah. Aim assist. Uh, aim assist there you go yeah but it's a little bit it's not a lot like it doesn't make a real difference in competitive settings or uh, any of that defending the it feels like <laughs> in like call of duty like close like from distance with like assault rifles or lmgs <clears throat> like keyboard and mouse all yeah, day, all day. But, like close up yep the smg yep. play which is so, like a major part of cod yeah so you do play play oh right? i play bro. okay I fucking, okay yeah, yeah that's, that's sure, that those are the, the the level of intricacy there like only like josefo knew max did you know about that stuff nah he didn't Right, because there is like it's 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 that level of of uh, of dialed in that the good players got to. <clears throat> That's good. So obviously, you know, the in in gaming, it's it's always been a a go on an adventure, uh, escapism of sorts. Yeah. What this allows everybody to do is just be a little bit better at the escapism. Like you I get agree. so ingrained into it, the same way that you get in, like, any any TV movie that you watch. Like you're 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 in it. In video games, you are actually in it, right? So that's, that's to me, was like one of the easiest no-brainers when it came to like, there's definitely something there. Because oh, yeah. th- that, same, that, same, that same relationship doesn't exist with, uh, with, with beer and gaming, right? Like no. you, you can't do that. It doesn't go hand in hand. You don't like, get better at least. No, no, you don't. Yeah, I think that's called like flow, right? Like when you're like locked into something and your brain is kind of like turned off yeah. to everything except the thing you're focusing on. Yeah. And we definitely, for me, like, I'll just be locked in. My girl will be calling me through the little intercom system. I had to tell her to quit. I'm like, you can't yeah. do that to me because I'm just like, I feel stupid. Yeah, you're it's in like a room locked. you're like, was that in the fucking game? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah it's, it's, uh, it's good. I, I, again, I, I always, I had this relationship with, with cannabis since 1997. 17 years old and I had to take breaks throughout my life because of the it being illegal etc so yeah now definitely. that I'm being reintroduced to it and in this sort of level right obviously like the the, the incredible strains that, that you guys uh, have and again me and, and friends of mine have been smoking anything that's for the longest time one I love the love the branding as, as, I, as I told you behind the cameras like Alan are like yeah. that, that's, that was our mascot for a very I mean it still is our mascot we've introduced another character to the cartoon world of uh, of the optic universe but the, the alien was the first and it was because a fan sent that into us and we we're just like that is the dopest fucking show alan the alien dude i love yeah that. yeah yeah. uh and i've always been in t- intrigued by you know the the, the far out yeah i think with weed it just goes so hand in hand with all that like why do you mysteries think that is? of the universe what do you think that is um because it i think it's just like expands your mind a little bit like in a way like mushrooms you know and acid they really expand your mind and like cannabis is just like a you know, five, 10 levels below that, but it still does the same thing. Like yeah. it allows you to be more open to things that you wouldn't necessarily be open to. Or it's like, I don't know. It's a good question about specifically why. Yeah. Because know. like, uh, if, if you look at me for me, for me, right. Like, uh, do you, do you fish? Do you, have you ever had an inclining for fishing? No. Right. But I have, like, I'm a fisherman. I am a fisherman. I love fishing. Something about fishing is in my fucking DNA that has like, makes me want to do that. With with cannabis, it was like everybody agreed for some reason. Then it's like, yeah, it's like it's 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 spatial more than yeah. You know what I mean? So there's a, there's a it's cosmic. There's a, yeah, it's cosmic. There's something definitely there. And if this plant was from Earth, like all the other plants that you know, obviously, and this grows on Earth, obviously, but no other plant has that same relationship that says that assimilates the state of mind that you're in when you're consuming that to space. Yeah, that's true. Which is to me Maybe like, DMT, it's, and it's but. unanimous, right? Oh, DMT and obviously yeah. like those. But I'm not saying this is the only one, but in this particular case, it's unanimous. Everybody associates that with that. That shit came from space. So that's probably why, dude. Yeah, thousand percent. Yeah, without a doubt. But I've, I've, I'm, 
I'm sure there's some other shit. Like, who smokes this first? You know, like that's who I want to know. I think I think like uh like with cooking meat, right? Like, no other carnivore cooks their meat. Oh like, yeah, that's we true. do. I, never thought about that. I think it was we had there was a cow that we just killed or harvested. Lightning struck, fire, fucking you know wildfire, you know came out. They were still fucking hungry, so they go they back like, and they turn to eat it. And they're like, good. what the fuck is that? Yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah, That's right. You know, like, it was like, oh shit. Like, well, I want to know, like, who put salt on that shit? Because salt by itself is just, oh shit, never. And they're like, oh wait, let's put that shit on fucking food. Oh, the whole thing, man. Have you seen that show on Hulu, The Bear? Nah, it's pretty good, dude. It's the bear? like, tell me about it. It's this guy uh, from. Fuck, I can't remember the name of the show, but it's on Showtime. Like, uh, uh, uh Penn and Teller? No, oh, no, the other one. Uh, uh, it's like a, it's like a sitcom, like a drama uh, show. Um, anyway, this fucking actor, but he he's in a kitchen. I'm stoned, so I'm bringing this up. Yeah, yeah, please. He, he's like a chef in a hella nice kitchen, and he goes. His brother like leaves him this their family restaurant. It's kind of shitty, but he goes back and it, just like he talks about like the whole salt, fat, and acid thing. Like, how did it, that's like the basis of every yeah. good food. Holy fuck. How did those yeah. three things come together? Nah. Like, who was the first person to be like, oh, yeah, you know, not only do we need the salt, but we need like this acid mm -hmm. and the fat, and that shit's gonna be good. That's how I feel nowadays when I'm making salad joints where I'm just like, look, I've, I've been smoking fritter <laughs> yeah, all the sure. Monday, Tuesday. Then this, I'm like, Let's, let me mix both of them together to have a different experience instead of the one that I've had the entire week. Yep. So I think, I think I'm there. And I, I OG is like the only strain that I don't get sick of like that. Okay. Like not sick of it, but I've, if I'm smoking the same thing for like a week, the next week I'm not getting as high. You know, I'm not feeling it the same way as I was like the first week. Chem driver for me. That That's is a good one. I just, I just, it's my favorite of all time. And I didn't know it was until I had it. Up until that point, you know, I was, uh, Guava Biscotti was a really Guava good Biscotti's one. Fire. And all the ones, but it wasn't until I had the chem driver that, that, that we grew that it was just like, and maybe it was because I had a, a different relationship with those plants because I was, you know, going there and, and I was there when they were babies and I was there when they were harvested and I was there. That definitely plays a role. You know, so I think oh, yeah. it, I think that that's why that run of chem driver was just like sparked a different uh, affinity for that specific strain. So, yeah, chem does it, man. Chem gets you high. Yeah. Get the, I, I think there's something to be said about having that relationship with your plant. Like I've always felt like homegrown gets you higher. Always been a huge like grow your own at home guy mm -hmm. like people everyone should grow like it's your in california especially like it's mm -hmm. your fucking right mm -hmm. to grow six plants like do it you know yeah it gives you such a good perspective on what it takes to you know produce quality at scale and also just produce quality anyway like yeah. coming up with new flavors and all that's super tough and like you get high off your own and you like kind of respect them plant more because exactly. of how hard it is to do. And you respect all the growers for yeah, that exactly. same thing. And then you are looking to also be respected. And that's what it just makes you a better artist of sorts as yeah. you grow in this thing. They, but, I, I, I'm definitely going to. I've always said it from the beginning since I started talking to Max. I'm like, you know, at one point or another, I would like to, uh, I, I would like to grow my own uh, just because I've had that relationship with it. I was telling the last podcast, podcast guest uh, from last week that, uh, that I used to take all the seeds from my Chi Town brown weed and just like fucking, brown. I would I would poke holes in the dirt and just you know leave them and and sometimes a little thing would pop up and oh, holy fuck and then I I dropped a, a seed in in water and it grew and I was like growing weed in Schaumburg Illinois and I'm like I gotta throw this shit out the fucking <laughs> yeah no I'm like I'm literally fucking growing this but I wanted I wanted to do it oh, so. Yeah. I know that I have a green thumb. How good or whatever is gonna be. That's who cares as long no, as I as, as long as I have that opportunity like i'm gonna take it weed's cool there's like levels to it obviously but like any weed's pretty good like you know what i mean if like it's just we compare it we get all like i get all yeah. fucking connoisseur on it and i'm like oh this compared to that isn't that great but like you could literally just put it outside and water it and it's like it gets you high you know you might not have like the structure or like yeah. the look that you people want or you want to consider like the best but it'll get you fucking high and it'll it, better than no weed right better than no weed yeah, we were we were in Mexico fishing uh, like two years, two years ago, actually. And uh, and I sent a picture to the group and it was, you know, some backyard weed. They, they didn't clip it. It was nothing. It was, they literally gave it to us. And that's all we had. And we were higher than fuck. Oh, we, yeah. It took a while, you know, longer than usual. But we were higher than fuck. We rolled like no bullshit had to have been like 120 joints like through the entire weekend because it, it took that many. And there was like 12 of us, too. So it was, yeah. it was, a, it was, it was a big group. Um. But yeah, I, I do like though uh, the the 
the being picky nowadays, especially yeah, when you have sure. like the, the the incredible variety that's that's being created by by everyone, and then you sort of get into this this opportunity to become a better expert in 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 the cannabis that you're smoking yep. just because of trial and error and continuing to to do that so i i do appreciate a good a good kind of swear that can put you on some some good shit yeah agreed man and it it really is there's something to be said about like finding a variety that like you like the way it affects you like we were talking about earlier the anxiety shit like there are certain strains that just give me anxiety and don't make me feel like good mm-hmm. you know or they make me a little more like my mind is racing more, you know, and I like a good body high. Like I like indica. If I had to say, I know indica and sativa is like a debated upon term, but like I think people understand what you mean when you use it. Um, so I like a good, you know, body high more than anything. So I'm not like a blue dream guy or sativa guy, really. I, I don't think I've gotten to that level where I can like tell the difference yeah. still, uh, because like when I get when I get high, like it's just the whole, the whole, it's a whole experience. Yeah. Uh, but I, I did ter- uh, tend to lean towards the indicus now, right? When, when at first I thought that, you know, I was a sativa guy because I like the energy of it and all that. But like, I, all of my favorite ones have been like indica dominant. Yeah. But, yeah. And I think and, it affects everyone differently, no matter what. So that's why it's hard to classify them. Like, but, um, yeah, I like to get high. That's what I call it stoned. Mm-hmm. Like stoned versus high. They're two yeah. different feelings, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the I want to talk obviously biscotti being one of the one of my favorite ones that, that you guys have. You guys uh, had also a guava biscotti through Connected, right? Yeah, Connected is that's their strain. Both of those are connected, but mm. uh, they're my partners. Like fire strains for sure. Is that how you, the relationship between Alien Labs and and Connected happened? No, uh, we um actually crazy story we. They had a shop, so connected out of this shop in Sacramento that was like known for having really good weed. It was called Fruit Ridge Health and Wellness. And uh, there was only a couple. There was like one other one, um, Foreign Wellness Center, that had like fire. And you could go there and buy, you know, fire ass weed. And um, I would try to vend there, and they never would let me. They would look at the weed, and it was hella good. Like it was better than a lot of the shit they had on the shelf. And I was selling it for cheaper because at that time, like I understood the power of like being in places that were known for high quality weed like if you're there and they're known for high quality like you're almost just high quality by extension even if you're not yeah you're giving a discount but you're buying the opportunity to market in yeah, that level exactly so they would never pass me through and i was like fuck and i'd always go to this uh clothing store there afterwards like i'd go make my money i'd go to this clothing store and then i'd go home and uh, i was complaining to the woman that would always help me uh, her name was maya and she's like oh shit like the owner of that place is my neighbor like you want me to hook or I was like, oh, really? Like, I'll give you $1,000 if you help me out with it. And uh, she texted him and was like, hey, is it cool if I link you with this guy? And she, he said, yeah. And then I brought him the weed and he was like, this is so good. Like, I want it all, you know? Like, everything you guys make. And we didn't have that many lights. Like, my partner had like 60. I think I had like, it was early in the game. So I was just still on my six, but my partner had 60. And um, I was just bringing him all the shit. They, fi- they bought it all and they loved it. And then, when legalization happened, like we don't have money, we don't come from money. Like both of us, you know, come from humble beginnings, if you will. And uh, our on top of that, our city was banned. Like they'd always been banned for growing. You couldn't even grow medical there. Um, Why? They just were conservative, just like a lot of California. I think fifty percent of California still bans it. Um, just conservative. They don't see the value in it, which is crazy to me. Like these cities are falling apart, literally, and like the money could be, you know use for that but anyway um i we were we had we didn't have the money it's super expensive to get a licensed facility and we were in a banned city and he was like the owner and founder of connected caleb he was like you guys can like be in this growth that we have and uh so he put us in there and my me and my partner moved or i moved to sac my partner would come like a few days a week and um we eventually we're just like yo if like we should just partner up for good like you guys know this business i didn't the the meta there's like you have 140 lights and you grow fireweed and if you want to like do anything above that the skill gap is huge like for business and scaling yeah and growing the amount of lights is one thing but even just the business behind multi-million dollar enterprises yeah. is like something that i wasn't prepared to you know, uh, handle. So we partnered up, we, um, 
and the rest is kind of history. You know, now we're I think Alien Labs is like the third um, best selling cannabis flower behind like a couple brands that are one's boof and one's pretty decent. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's crazy. It really is. And we're in Arizona. We drop in Florida in October. Oh man, congrats. That's awesome. Yeah. We've been in Arizona for like two years now. Super good market, like super fire weed over there. Um, a couple fire brands, but mostly they, you know, we're still learning, but we got, I love the Arizona weed. Like it might be better, might be better than California. At least for us. Which really? Out Arizona. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, the, the it's everything's the same, but it's yeah. like we have a lot less lights there. Mm-hmm. You know, we have like three. I think now we have like almost 700, but we just opened that expansion. So we had like 300 lights, you know, and it's just like taking care of 300 lights versus taking care of 2000. Like nine day. Yeah. No, I can imagine, man. Yeah. Just uh, obviously because they every every plant that serves its its attention right so the the bigger it scales the lower the quality it may happen in, in some of these yeah and it's just like you know human human error or not like it's it's gonna happen it's in there somewhere and it, it gets lost in the sauce yeah i think with, it's with all of them. that's the like the meta yeah you know like scaling your quality and doing it this as the same as it would be in your 150 lighters like if you can, I don't think there's really, we're on our way. We're very close. We're getting there. Mm-hmm. And we've put in a lot of work, especially over the last year to like get the quality up to where it was back then. Um, but just like no company has really done that in my mm-hmm. view. Like we're the closest for sure, but there's not like a second, you know, not to say that the weed isn't quality, but I'm talking no, about. No, of course. Like, I mean, you, we literally just talked about how any weed is, is, is that. Yeah, right? but yeah. There are, exactly. But there are levels to that. Thing. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So no, I, I completely, completely understand. Um, yeah, I mean, let's let's talk about what, what you're smoking and what I'm smoking. I always forget to do this part, which is oh really yeah. Important. So I brought uh, this is Skittles. Mm-hmm. Um, my my boy Hope Lord was uh, he's one of my best friends. We game together. We were just actually playing multiverses like last night. Mm-hmm. Um, we we drove to he was friends with the uh, Skittles guys, and we drove to Willits where they're from. Like you know, five six years ago in the middle of the night, and bought a cut for twenty grand of the original Z. And uh, we never we put out a few packs, but it kind of is like just hard to grow, man. It's sl- it's slow to grow, um, you know, not great yields, like just a, one of the more difficult plants. So we kind of put it put it away and uh, decided to run it again, and came out super fire. Really, it's good. so good. I'm it also so good. Yeah, I'm also smoking right the same. Yeah, the same yeah, thing. yeah. So so good. Uh, what is your favorite strain if there is one? Or uh, if you have a top OG. three. I mean, OG Kush for sure, number one. Yep. Skittles is up there. Just like plain, the plain strains. You know, like I have great crosses that I love of these two, but like they all start with the base, right? And it's like OG, Skittles, and Gelato. You know, Gelato, Biscotti are like really up there for me. I think Cookies probably was my favorite, but like those are offsprings of it. You know, in the Girl Scout Cookies. The original Thin Mint was, like, so fire to me. Like, it was, like, the only thing. We just smoked OG and, like, purples and shit. You know, that's, like, what was exotic until cookies came out. And I remember getting my first bag of cookies from my boy uh, Heisenburn. And it was, like, holy shit, this is, like, different. Like, nothing I'd ever had before. Even being from NorCal, like, you see, like, fruity stuff like Blue Dream. And, yeah, you know, I remember Afgu. One of my friend's families grew Afgu. Um, then like, of course, all the early girls and, but mostly it was like sour and OG and stuff like that. And then you get something different, like cookies. Usually it wouldn't get you high like OG did, but it did. It got you super lit, which was, I feel like all the best, most popular strains, like pretty much get you pretty high. Yeah. You know, Uh, look, as, as I try all of these different ones, I feel very lucky, but also jealous that I didn't get to experience it the way that, that you know, OGs like you guys yeah, have, you know what I mean? It's different. Yeah, I bet, man. I mean, if, if you if you were there at the beginning of, you know, the uh, the, the wine industry yes, before, you know, it's, it's the same thing. Um, or being an IPA maker, right, in, in, in beer now. Like, the, the, there's levels, of, uh, of course, to everything that, that, we're, that the people are doing, which is why this, to me, is the most interesting one because it's never going to end, right? Like it, there's yeah. always going to be evolving different uses for it are going to continue to happen. Um, yeah. You know what? When we were talking about this, like I took two more hits and I got, just got 
fucking blast. I know that got me super high. Yeah, it's so Skittles. Uh, it's nice when you can usually smoke it pretty much all day, and like you get high for sure, but it's like an even high. It's not like yeah. so powerful. Which we is good. we just had uh, Z cubed in uh, in New York when when we were just there, and it was it was it, it became my favorite for the whole time that I was there. Yeah, I just wanted to smoke it nonstop, and it wasn't I wasn't getting like any higher. Like I got to a certain level, and that that was good. It just re- it just reacted a certain way with me that it's, I was just like I could not get away from it. Stains your palate with turps too. Like you can really taste it. Yeah. I don't think all weed really tastes like crazy, but Skittles taste insane. So all of its hybrids taste good. Z cubes, fire. Um, there's like BTYZ, mm-hmm. a bunch of different Skittles cross that fucking hidden. Yeah. Um. At at, at uh. You, you said that in 2014 and 2017, that was like you you think that that was like the best time for- between 2014 and 2017 yeah for sure yeah that why, why is that i just think that it was just different like way less people that came into the culture like to like profit off of it like i feel like people were really there are definitely some growers out there that are still like putting this in as a craft and like res- should be respected for the work they put in and the quality of their flower but like i don't think anyone most of the people were doing it to like find cool new shit and like get their friends. I know I started alien labs. Like I was like, I want two things. Like I want all my boys to be able to smoke fucking fire. And I want everyone to know what real fire is, you know? Cause at the time there is no one that would tell you that we weren't like, we came out like crazy fucking quality. Like people hadn't seen we like this before really. And, uh, that shit to me was so cool. Like it made so many people step their game up. Yeah. Like quality wasn't really like, I don't think there was like, it wasn't well understood. And I think it's still evolving. Like what real true quality is, you know, like it's not just pretty weed that looks good anymore. You know, it's got to smoke a certain way. It's got to be smooth and it's got to taste a certain way, you know, and it's got to smell like it or taste like it smells. And, there's so many different quality indicators now that I think like we're a part of like bringing the more understanding uh, about that to the masses. You know, yeah. I, I love that. Uh, we, we were talking about content and then we went on this uh, on this completely different thing. But the reason I'm bringing up content again is like people like me who are who are reconnecting with cannabis when we weren't able to in the past are going to need. You know, people like you who are going to educate on what is good, what is dope, what isn't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's just it's just the way that the, the that the world is, right? Like, you listen to people who have, you know, experts in a field, and you listen to their opinions, and and you know, you take what you can from them. Um, so like, any any thoughts on 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 expanding that that side of? Uh, yeah, of that's a good. I mean, dude, I, I think about it, and it's like I definitely, you know, we've used our voice for so much that it feels like. I forget that we have to continue to do that, Mm -hmm. you know? And I'm just like, Oh no, people know, but they really don't. Mm -hmm. And like, they got to be told you're right by people like us who, who know, and and they trust us to know, you know? So definitely, uh, just everyone, all of us, all those cannabis operators just need to be better. I wish we weren't so like persecuted. I hate to say, use that word. It sounds like way worse than it actually is, but I hate that we, uh, just all of our content gets taken down. Like, dude, we used to be able to just grow like, crazy man i built a huge real audience like off alien labs like of course and now we can't even use it and like there it's not every weed company that can't you know it's just like the high profile ones like all of us get our shit taken down Mm -hmm. you know so it sucks we just need to make we do a thing called alien labs tv where we kind of like make um like when we just dropped the gummies a few months back we like went to the factory like willy wonka style toured it you know and that's the kind of stuff that's cool to me. Like, I can, love. can we park there for a second? Yeah. Because it was uh, you. You brought gummies. Yeah. That were medicinal, and there was just like plain candy. Yep. And you said that you set out to just create a good candy, and then the afterthought after that. I mean, obviously with a plan, right? Uh, was to then once you have the candy, yeah. like super good, then you add the. I just tend to like create when I'm making stuff. Like, I want to start like with a basic thing, and then add the weed to it, mm-hmm. right? You know, so for that, I was like, I want to make a candy that's good enough to be at 7-Eleven standalone. And like where my brain went from that idea was like, there's a ton of, I'll just go through the whole thing. This is like straight up the way my marketing brain thought. Yeah. It was, I was like, I'd go to these studios, right? With like YSL and Young Thug and, uh, you know, all these different rappers that we knew. 
and I would always see them having hella bags of candy. Like they just love, I think lean and candy go together, man. And they just love the candy. Yeah. And I was like, this would be hella easy to be like, this is a fire candy, bro. Put this on the, uh, Fucking genius. eat this dude. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's non-medicated like, cause they don't like edibles. They don't fuck with edibles, but they'll eat candy all day. So I was yeah. like, I'll just bring big old bags of this candy in here, branded and everything. And it'll be sitting on these studio tables when everyone walks in and, uh, that's what we did. So I made really good candy. It took us like a few months uh, of like just figuring out and trying a bunch of different flavors. And then we paired it with the hash. Um, a lot of people do rosin gummies, which are good. I love them. But I also feel like rosin just has like a way more um, like weed taste. And it also like leaves this like oily feeling on my tongue that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. So we went with just straight hash. And uh, they get you super fucking high. So we were pairing the flavors with the hash and you have to like figure out how much flavor to put in the gummy based on how the hash tastes strong mm -hmm. or not. Um, and we settled on a few flavors and, you know, we came out and we also um, added nerds to them. Like this candy came out in the meantime of us making them that were called like nerds clusters, I think. Yeah. And um, they make their own nerds. So at this factory, oh, they yeah. make their oh, own nerds. Shit. Bro, those are my favorite. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Those yeah, little yeah, gummy um, in the middle. Yeah. Nerd Plus, cluster. The nerd cluster. Yeah. They're like a nerd okay, rope chopped it's, up. It's blue and, and yeah, strawberry. Yeah, they're red. Yeah, right. Fucking good. They're so good. Yeah. Um, so we, I was like, hey, can we, you guys make uh, nerds? And they were like, oh, yeah, we can for sure. So I was like, all right, bet. Put some in there. So I'm, they're not really nerds. We call them flavor asteroids. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. That's Fuck great. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, now fucking those are the best gummies out for sure. And we came at a so approach, good. approachable price point, man. Like they're a little bit cheaper. A lot of our, our weeds is expensive, dude. We're high yeah. end, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wanted this no, one it's, to be it's, able it's, it's not to expensive. go to the masses. It's worth it. It's right? worth it for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's super, super good. I don't know if I, if I was being too loud there with my excitement because they were fucking fire and I'm fucking stoned. Um, that's dope, man. It, have you have you thought about like where where Alien Labs can go as a brand? Uh, obviously, like you're 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 sort of obviously like mega mega established in, in cannabis just as a fucking brand, like top, you know, with the, with you know the top, right? Yeah. Uh, so where do you see like what other opportunities have you have you seen out there um, for that? The clothes people love our merch and apparel, man. Like we treat it like it's it's it is literally a whole separate business from our weed uh, stuff, but we also treat it that way. So we have like different creative team. You know, we have a ton of designers, not a ton, but we have a few designers that work on it um, all the time. And we actually drop in Zoomies like in the middle of this month. Mm -hmm. So that was like a big, pretty big milestone for us. Like we've just been doing D to C, um, but. You know, we have a cool brand and we made cool shit. Yeah. People are pumped on it. You know? Zoomies. It's a whole, yeah. Fucking dope, bro. It's pretty sick. It's a big, it's a different audience for us, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, as, as, as we, as I started out on this journey to build a brand in cannabis because I'm, you know, I love smoking and I, 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 I have a tendency of making my hobbies, my jobbies that way. Yeah, I don't feel too guilty. Thing. So as, as, uh, where was I going? Yeah. So from a, from a brand perspective, as we're growing, you know, we look at, at, at people like you who have like established a brand the right way and sort of like we're, we're so big that it transcended into people who didn't know anything about cannabis because the people that know is one level yep. and then just strangers that aren't new and they're just getting reintroduced. Like that's a, that's a different thing because think about the amount of, of, uh, of brands that are out there right now at any given dispensary. Like for some reason I gravitated towards that. Was it my life for aliens or was it the, the quality or the, or the strengths that were like sort of engaging with yeah, it's like all things. Yeah. So obviously the, the merch is, is, is cool. Man, Zoomies is, is a really, really like. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I think it's just the beginning of like the clothing journey, but um, I see that it's so much easier to make cool clothes than it mm -hmm. is to make good weed and cool weed. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, of course. I, I, I mean, arguably from a creative standpoint and, and all that, it all goes hand, hand in hand. Oh, yeah, it's, definitely. It's as much as this is something that, we consume on a daily basis. It is a lifestyle also. Yeah. Right. It's not, it's like, uh, it's, it's like living a healthy life. You, you can't just do that. It has to be a lifestyle yeah, uh, choice. Definitely. But I think that this above like all the other stuff just makes it, you know, sort of hand in hand. It's part of, it's part of the lifestyle. Yep. That's, that's super definitely. cool. Do you guys, uh, have like your own in-house designer? Yeah. We have a in-house, a whole team that, um, the apparel company is called 2069 LLC. It's just like, uh, 
we used to say that this was some 2069 shit. Like it was just like the future mm-hmm, weed, you know? Mm-hmm. So that turned into the company and um, just me and my boys that do, they um, own a marketing company that uh, does all the like branding and design for our brands. Mm-hmm. They actually just did a bunch of stuff with uh, Epic for Fortnite. It's pretty cool. Um, I don't know if it's come out yet or if I just spilled the beans, but. Mm-hmm. Well, thank um, you. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> no, they make like clothes. They did their uh, some apparel shit for them. That was dope. And um, we just like got to become. So we hired them at the beginning when uh, Connected and us teamed up. But then we they just became like my best friends. Like I hang out with these guys all the time. Like I see all the movies with them. Like we game together, you know. And it just naturally that works so good for creative. Like I can just be on a call with those guys. Like we just launched a strain called Y two K. And I was like, you know what was popping in Y2K was those T.Y. Beanie Babies. Remember those? Mm. So um, yeah. and I started thinking about how me and my, my best friend Scott would go to McDonald's and get those fucking Beanie Babies. And that was like, I don't know when it was. I, I, I feel like it was like early in the year 2000s or like it was the year 2000, maybe earlier. I'm not sure. I never looked it up. But um, I went to them and I was like, hey, you know what we should do for Y2K? Because Y2K is a purple oracle cross, which is uh, like... Purple Oracle was huge. Like that was like one of the first exotics. Like grapes were like one of the first exotics. Like you, grapes kind of mean something different everywhere. But uh, in the Bay Area, like grapes was like an artificial grape terp. Like it smelled like fucking a grape swisher or like a grape candy. Like it had this fake grape smell. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to smoke it. Everyone used to smoke it. But I was like back then with the Happy Meal and shit. I got on my I got on a call with my marketing team and I was like, hey, let's let's drop this like a Happy Meal. And we'll make a T.Y. Beanie Baby. Mm. And uh, so we got together with a couple stores that we like. And we uh, got burger trucks that um, we liked in the area. Like we got this female-owned burger truck here in SoCal, SoCal called uh, Baby's Burgers. And then up north, we did one with a company called Cardinal Burger. Both just like the best of the best hamburgers. And we had them pop up on site. And if you bought an eighth, you got a ticket. And you brought it out to the truck. And they gave you the Happy Meal. Damn. So you got the burger, fries, like a drink with the T.Y. Beanie Baby in there. Damn. Sick. People the, love that. It got like featured in tons of, you know, LA yeah. Weekly. And- well, that's, that's, that's good marketing, right? And the, yeah. the best marketing is always going to come from people who are, one, passionate about a certain field that are so looking forward to it growing to whatever's going to grow, but having fun along the way. A lot of people are just like mega scared to sort of deviate from what their brand values are. Yeah. Because they just get stuck in this one thing for too long and it just becomes stuck. You have for to too be long flexible, especially in this industry. But yeah. yeah, so it's crazy to be able to be so close with your team that you can just like kind of say an idea and they'll execute it like flawlessly, like as you saw it in your head. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like we, we just did a, as we're, we're a gaming organization. We, we just, we just uh, released a floaty, a pool floaty oh, nice. of, of, uh, of Optic uh, Wallace. Is this little mini green wall dude that's angry all the time? Anyway, but like no one's doing that, right? And no, we, no one's doing. We floaties. literally just said, "Let's do a fucking floaty." That's sick. Yeah, so I'm like, "That's good." Uh, we did a coffee thing, you know, for what? Just because we fucking wanted. So eventually, you know, when it becomes a little bit more popular, like obviously, like the 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 inevitable, my worlds are gonna collide again, and you know, the the green wall would be made of yeah. something, some some that's other cool. kind I of love green. That. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool to do just different shit in your... Like, I like how Supreme, they just make whatever the yeah. fuck they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They make, like, a camper. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so cool. And just to be able to have Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah they just like a skyline or something, right? Yeah, like one it, was of those like vans. A, it was like a, uh, like a trailer camper. Mm-hmm. It was sick, though. But it's just, like, to have a brand that's so cool and, and, like, people fuck with it so much. Like, that's really for the fans, man. Like, y- you would never... No one would ever be able to do that if not, like, you, if you didn't have the support of, like, the people that fucked with you. Yeah, dude. No, we, we, we got very, very, very lucky uh to be to be a part of gaming so early on and yeah you guys were like i didn't know like i i watched twitch and shit obviously and mm-hmm. like um i hit up one of my boys who like is super into like esports and he's hella good his name's uh the great blaine he plays like apex he's super good he's carried me he's my really close the friends hard younger brother yeah and kids are so good at video games like yeah. it's not even fair like no, they're so good and he would carry me on destiny carry me through the lighthouse dude like carry me on everything whatever game yeah. it was i'm like leo blaine i need you to carry me and uh he i hit him up i'm like hey what's up with optic gaming he's like oh they're so sick they're like one of the first gaming companies bro and he like just gushed about you guys yeah. i was like oh that's tight then like i'm down yeah. to fucking that was when uh yeah he hit me up to do the podcast 
Yeah, um, we we've, we've been doing it from uh for ve- from a, for a very long time uh and growing with the pains of what is like sort of exactly almost the same as what cannabis is going through right now. Uh except that we had it easier because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't being shadow banned and all that. Yeah, so. I remember when it first started, people were just like it was like a, a meme. You mm-hmm. know, it was like a joke. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, it was like StarCraft, I think it was one of the first uh Mhm. Maybe Overwatch did a lot for it, but anyway, to see what it's become now, like bro, Faze emails me like 15 times a day because I bought like a Mirakami like mouse pad one yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like they're just crushing it. Those are my boys, man. Yeah, those guys so are so proud cool. of them. Yeah. So proud of them. Yeah, they, we. Uh, they enjoy the product. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I just, I just sent Tommy some of that, but yeah, I, I, I'm telling you, it's, it's so culturally relevant. Also, with, with, I mean, we talk about it constantly. I mean, this brand exists because of. Of the opportunity to have you know those those playgrounds and opportunities with uh within gaming right uh because of the amount of people the other thing that i wanted to do is to be you know to help other influencers or other gaming personalities or other uh you know you name them to to sort of like have an opportunity to be like yo if this dude can do it yeah then maybe it's not as 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 bad as it once was and you know maybe now i can sort of step out a little bit more that's uh, a cool because that's it, it's cool. it's it's hard to hide something that's part of your life right yeah your lifestyle, for sure. right? that's how imagine. it was with us in ca- cannabis man like we were definitely putting labels on jars like when people were still scared to say they grew weed you know and i love that about it too man that some one of my favorite things about alien labs is that people will come up to me and be like damn like you inspired me like we've inspired a ton of brands in this industry yeah. but like just everyday people like because i don't my family is poor man like i was the first uh person in my family to like have success you know and so i think people look at us and say damn like i could do that and if yeah. if i could do it like really anyone could i know that for a fact I've, like if I've, i could do I it dude, that one too. you could do it yeah <laughs> you know yeah yeah it's all effort and hard work yeah you know? i mean the, the second that you that you think to yourself that you're not as as talented as somebody else then you know that you just gotta outwork them yeah and they that's something that no one can compete with if you're if you're you're determined to do so. That's very true, man. Yeah. And look, if if you aren't yourself determined to do so, then maybe they're right, right? Like it's, someone is better. Yeah. I mean, I think just wanting something so bad, like, well, you'll get it. Yeah. If like you just don't stop wanting it. You know, there was tons of times where I wanted to I'm like, all right, like this is working out, but like I don't know if it's really gonna work out like I want it to. Like maybe I should go, you know. I don't know what the hell I would have done, but I definitely have woken up and been like, fuck. It. yeah a hundred percent not lately yeah but you know when on the come up when it was when it was like hey well is this going to be a thing or not you know yeah uh so w- one last question uh b- before i let you go uh, and thank you for for stopping by man and, and oh, for yeah, the gifts no obviously problem, you man. you hooked us up with some y2k uh what was the other one that ends with the tech visconti visconti in that fucking weight that it one's smelled, fire dude. it smelled fucking incredible you said it won some award or some what did, what yeah, it won the Olympics, a uh, few awards in both Zaw Olympics. Um, it also won, it got second at the Emerald Cup for indoor, like the first ever indoor Emerald Cup. And it's only been out for like a year. It came out in May of 2021. So it's not like a year and a half. Yeah, dude, I cannot wait. It's, that's it's, one I of the best in our lineup for sure. People will yeah. love it too. It's like just enough biscotti with the lemon make it something new i like this uh, i like the lemons man i like the citrus i do max doesn't i don't I just the peppery stuff like uh i don't i don't know what i like anymore you know what i mean like when i when i first started like i was like oh yeah definitely like this one the it was like, like a lemon pepper from cookies uh, yeah from cookies yeah the rick I, ross collab i think yeah i fucking smoked it and i was just like, oh fuck me it just like hit me weird and i just no, i just gave it away i think that one it's like the terp that's associated with black peppers like myrcene which is heavy and a lot of like cakes mm-hmm. all the cakes are myrcene heavy i mean like modern cannabis is pretty much myrcene heavy but um what myrcene does is it lowers one of the properties is that it lowers the blood brain barrier for thc so like strains high in that terp usually gets you super high like wedding cakes always been one that just like flattened. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a wedding cake guy too. I'm I like cake, yeah. I'll be, I like it all. Like I yeah, said, me right? too. Man, I'm not really too. <laughs> I like a specific effect, but mm-hmm. like I know if I need to be there, like I know what to go to. So yeah. like I still like trying everything. You know, I yeah. smoke a ton of hash and, and rosin more than I do flour. Yeah. Um, but 
I love flour. I smoke a lot of flour, but yeah. it's not like I do hash. It's just my when my uh girl got pregnant, like with my first kid, like five years ago, um, she didn't like the smell of flour. So I started smoking uh dabs way more. And then it was just like, oh, this is easy. I just take one huge rip and get high as hell. Or you smoke like, you know, you take the time to roll a sick joint and you smoke the whole thing and it takes like an hour. Yeah. Yeah, I like the process, but yeah, I also like I the too. efficiency. I also like yeah. the efficiency, especially at when home. I'm gaming mostly, like if yeah. I just, I don't want to t- stop and roll at home. Up. When home here in LA, my second home here in LA, not home back in Texas. I've, yeah, you can't do that in Texas. Yeah, Joe Rogan, he's out there dry as a fish. <laughs> yeah, I was. It's becoming a little bit more, more. Uh, in like Austin, little little. I think it's more. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Austin is like a mini LA, though. Yeah. Somebody sent me a picture of Alien Lab sticker on something. My okay. uh, the CFO is from Austin. That's where he lives. Yeah, no, I, I, you do see it, man. Like, uh, again, that's, that's the, that's the organic marketing that in the end creates lifelong, uh, fans of that one, uh, uh, of yeah, the brand. For sure. Um, I read somewhere very early on is when, when I started optic that, that humans become uh, brand loyal at the age of eight, at the age of eight, your favorite cereal is going to be your favorite cereal forever. It's crazy. You, you know? So that's when we, you know. That's hella true, yeah. actually. Now, especially that you say that about cereal, like, yeah. bro, I've liked the same cereal forever. Yeah, but but uh, where I was going with that thought, uh, because before it was mega high, right? Bef- where I was going with that thought is that when you try something new in later years, then that's when you like you remember it more, and you make the educated decision to be like, this is what worked. As a kid, you don't think like, oh, what's my best strategy in life? You know, like what <laughs> yeah, makes what, sure. what's the easiest approach? As a huge, as a, you know, when you grow older, it's like, oh, this is, this is the thing that I like most. Yeah, for sure. You pay attention to that sort of stuff. So yeah, I don't know where I was going with that, or where, we, where it even started. Brand loyalty, man. Yeah, brand loyalty. That's why I yeah. still buy the Pokemon game. Yeah. Every time it comes out, I'm like, whatever, dude, I'll buy it and play it. And D- did it. you play uh, the the mobile version of it? Uh, like Pokemon Go. Yeah. I think like, like early on, I did like because. Yeah, I did for sure. Like, did you take drives point. to go to different places to get that, or? Uh, no, but I remember like downloading a an Android emulator on my yeah. PC. Oh shit! And like, shit. I set my fucking location yeah. to, like San Francisco. Yeah. Because like where I live in Reading, it was trash. But yeah. In San Francisco, there was like so much shit. Yeah, so many gyms. Yeah. Yeah. I played it for a little bit. I I never played Pokemon growing up. Uh, I was like that was like the year or like the little generation after me. Yeah, I was like an old, older guy. I still yeah. am. I'm like the old guy playing Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, I play Minecraft even to this day. Yeah, you know, so I'm, I, I never played that one. Skipped me. Minecraft, dude. It is. It is. I'm gonna tell you why it's the best best game ever. Yeah, right, I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, Minecraft is human humanity in the earliest stages of humanity. Yeah, definitely. I played in, it a little bit. Yeah, in a world in which like. If you dig long enough, you're going to run into electricity. You're like, what the yeah. fuck? <clears throat> and it's like, you know, that, that's what made me what, like, growing, right? Like, my main thing to do there is crops. So, again, why, oh, why do I, I like that. that? Why am I a fisherman? Why do I like growing stuff? I don't fucking know. Why did I, you know, that's the relationship that I, that I have. That's just in your DNA, man. Yeah. Which is the craziest shit. Like, is it, is it not a simulation then? Oh, I, I, dude, it's crazy. My kids... <laughs> having traits of mine yeah. before they're like able to learn them from mm-hmm, me mm-hmm. is like something that mm-hmm. always blows my mind. I'm like, Oh wow. You get, that's me. Yeah. But how do you know it's me? Yeah. Like it's just in their DNA. Dude. What yes. kind of fish do you get? Bass. Oh, nice. Yeah. Bass. Uh, uh, uh what is it called? Clear water, clear water, fresh water, fresh, fresh water. water. Yeah. yeah. My, uh, stepdad or my mom's ex-husband now, but he is a professional bass fisherman. Oh, uh, up awesome. in Redding, like there's crazy bass fishing. Yeah, dude. Lake Shasta, Clear Lake, like there's a bunch of different lakes that. Uh, Do you fish? No, I've been a few times. Like it's a super popular hobby in weed. Yeah, like where I'm from in Redding too. Like everyone likes to. Same. Go. I like to. I like to smoke while I fish. Smoke while I eat. Smoke while I do. It's my thing. Yeah, it goes with sure. everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we have a brand uh, called Guggen uh, Guggen Squad. We have Guggen Baits. It's uh, oh, one cool. of the best soft base selling company in the United States. Um, and it started the same way that, that we started optic the same way that we're trying to do the, the pine park thing, where it's like content is a, a, a good way to connect with, uh, with just your customer in the, in the yeah, end. Yeah. Right? I feel the same way for sure. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. You know, the, the longer you, you stay out there, the better and, and more trustworthy you like you become, right? Because they see you on a daily basis and they know what, what you're about. Um, but yeah, anyway, so fishing, that's, uh, 
it was on my DNA the way that weed was always going to be yeah. something that I that I participated in somehow in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that was my last question. Uh, any any closing comments? Anything that you want to nah, say? No. Thanks for having me, man. It was great to uh, smoke with you and yeah. um, find out more about Pine Park. And I'm cool to see you guys killing it, man. Gaming and weed is just like so they're forever interlinked yeah so let, let's do something together man. Oh, i think down, i think man, we, you it, want. it'd be good we'll we'll do a collab on the merch and then, yeah, and then something sure, something sure. on some cool That'd stuff be dope. uh certainly appreciate you coming on obviously big fan of, of of what you built from a brand perspective as a brand builder but also just from a consumer of thank cannabis you, it's it. fucking delicious this thing was fucking killer yeah, that was fire thank you brother i appreciate oh, yeah. you man hopefully this won't be the last time no we'll be back for sure all right all the information uh of him and his company is gonna be listed in the description down below Make sure to follow him uh, and we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.